all this side and today I will be reviewing the Dehanza Pro plugin for Premiere Pro. So a couple of weeks back, Dehanza reached out to me for reviewing their product and I was like, why not? So basically, Dehanza is a film emulation plugin designed to replicate the magic of analog film. So today, I will be giving you all a brief intro to the plugin and demonstrating what this plugin can do in just a few clicks. So let's dive right into it. So here, I have my timeline with the clip on it. Firstly, we will create an adjustment layer and drag it on top of our clip. I've done a little color correction to my clip as I have shot this in SLOG2 profile. If you want to know what settings I've used in my camera, let me know down in the comments and I will make a short video about it. So now let's go to the effects tab and search for the Dehancer plugin. Just drag it onto the adjustment layer. So as you can see, the colors have changed drastically as this is the default settings of the plugin. But don't worry, I will be changing it. As you can see, there are tons of different tabs which might look overwhelming. We don't need to use all of these. I'm just gonna quickly show the settings that I have tweaked. So firstly, I have the input tab. Here we have the same settings as the Lumetri tab. In the source tab, it's set to Rec 709. Which is fine in my case, as I have already converted my log clip into Rec 709. But if you haven't done that, then you can simply go to choose camera. And then from the camera tab, and you can choose your camera and the profile that you have shot on. There's a huge list of cameras with picture profiles, so make sure to go through them. Then, we have this temperature and tint setting which are pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and tweak the settings later. Okay, so now let's move on to the film tab. So this is the interesting part of the plugin, as this is where all of the film stocks are present. There is a long list so you can mess around and find out which works for you. I'm gonna go with the stock called Prokudin Gorowski 1906. So this is the kind of look that I want for my image. Next we have the film developer. As you can see that we have 4 different options. So I'm not gonna do much here, I will simply just go to the color boost and tweak that a little. So basically what color boost does is it works like saturation but a little differently, emulating how colors would look on a printed film. Next we have the print tab. This basically tells you how your image would look if it were to be printed on a film. So here we have 5 options. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose Kodak Endura Glossy Paper as it works well for me by enhancing the contrast a little bit. There are various controls here as well but i'm gonna leave them set to default next we have the film grain similarly we have quite a bunch of options here but i'm gonna choose the 35 mm iso 500 as you can see here the green has been applied additionally we have a custom option here as well in which we can set the parameters according to your choice but i'm just gonna stick with the 35 mm iso 500 option next we have everyone's favorite halation so what halation does is it basically adds red orangish light bloom around the areas of a highlight on our image so I'm just gonna select one of the presets that is 16mm slash super 16. As you can see we have the red blooming effect in the bright areas. Here as well we have a custom tab to find in the settings. You can also click on the mask mode to see what areas are being affected. Next we have our bloom. So what bloom does, it adds a little misty look to the bright parts of the image making it softer and creamier. So let's just enable it and I will choose 16mm here as well. You can probably see the difference it's making to the image. You can also use film damage to give your image that vintage look as if it is being played on a projector or something. Frankly speaking, it gives it some scratches and dirt. Lastly, we move on to the overscan. So what this does is it adds a film gate on top of our image. Here also we have a lot of options. You can just mess around and find out which works for you. I'm gonna go with the Ultra 16mm 1.85 is to 1. Leaving the other settings on default, I will just scale this up a little so that more of my image is visible. Also, I'll tweak the defocus a little which will result in blurring of the corners of the film gate. Now if you want the film mat to look more like a real film camera, then disable the static gate effect. What this does is it adds a kind of flickering motion to the gate which makes it look more like the actual film. So that's how I achieved the film look on my clip. I can just copy the adjustment layer and drag it onto the other clip to replicate the same effect. So yeah, that was all about it for the Dehancer. So my final thoughts after using Dehancer is that it's a great and powerful tool to get the film emulation in just a few clicks. And if you are new to film emulation, it's totally worth it as it gets the job done really fast. The only thing that I noticed is that that it's a very heavy effect as it is not GPU accelerated so it takes a lot of time to render which is totally understandable as it has so much inside it. Well if you found out the plugin was useful then do check out the link in the description and make sure to use the code SRFILMS10 to get 10% off your purchase. Also you can purchase specific plugins such as the Helation plugin or the Film Grain plugin it's totally up to you. Well that was all I hope you all enjoyed watching the video and I hope the video was well paced as it was my first tutorial slash review video let me know if i should make more videos like this and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also drop a like see you all next time